Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 19th of August 2011. The largest region on the disk is showing a lot of potential for activity but giving us none, and we'll see why in a minute. But first our trivia question. 51 years ago this day, Sputnik 5 was launched. It had 42 animals on board. Can you name the three types of animals that were on board? How many of them were returned alive to Earth? The answer will be given at the end. Since we met yesterday, we've only had one sea flare, and the X-ray background has dropped yet further. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what's going on. We still only have three officially numbered regions on the disk. 1271 in the northeast, 1272 in the southeast, and 1273 in the southwest. So let's take a look at each of them individually and see what's happened to them since yesterday. First let's take a look at region 1271, which is by far the biggest and best region around. It doesn't seem to have changed a great deal since yesterday, except for it's lost a small group of spots to the south and east that we were looking at yesterday. The other two separate regions still seem to be there and are still as yet unnumbered. Much like 1263 a couple of weeks ago, this region has the potential to flare, uh, but doesn't seem to be doing so. And we'll take a look at the uh, coronal images later and see possibly why this is the case. Next let's take a look at region 1272 in the southeast. It has decayed significantly since yesterday and is basically just one large spot with a few very very tiny spots surrounding it. So it seems to have lost most of its trailer spots overnight. This is not a good omen for future activity. Lastly, let's look in detail at region 1273 in the southwest. Now this region has really decayed overnight and I suspect will be gone by tomorrow. Next, let's take a look at the development dynamics of the regions using the data from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. In the Sunspot and Magnetic movies, I'd like you to concentrate on the development of Region 1271. The region apparently grows as it comes onto the disk, but that's more of a function of a reduction in the foreshortening than real growth in the magnetic field. So this region could be considered stable, which again is not considered a good omen for future activity. Next we move to the transition region using the data from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Here we're looking for filament eruptions and prominence eruptions. And again, I think the watchword here is potential. There doesn't seem to have been any, any in the last 24 hours. There is a prominence on the northwest limb that looks quite dynamic and therefore has the potential of erupting. And there is a large filament near Sun Center in the northern hemisphere that is darkening and rising. So that could be a very interesting event if it does go off because that would be pointed straight at the Earth. In the low temperature corona movie, again we should concentrate on region 1271. Though it seems to start off this 48 hour period relatively dynamic, it seems to be quieting down as time goes by. I've captured a single frame from the movie to illustrate what's going on here. If you look at the magnetic loops up in the corona, you can see they look like simple arches. This is what is called a potential field. A potential field has no spare energy in it. You have to have a field that is distorted or twisted to have energy stored in it. And that energy is the energy that's used in flares. So unless new magnetic flux emerges, or the sunspots start moving around or spinning, then there's going to be no spare energy in this field to produce major flares. In the high temperature image of the corona, and this is from the GOES SXI instrument, you can see there's another large coronal hole near the equator. In three or four days time, this will be in the Western Hemisphere and could potentially start affecting the Earth with a high-speed solar wind stream. So we should look out for that. In the SOHO coronagraph data, you can see that there was a faint CME towards the end of this 48-hour period. But as we saw no filaments erupting off of the disk, then this was probably from the backside of the Sun. In the bottom part of the C3 frame, you can see Mercury transiting the field of view. The solar wind data from ACE shows that the temperature, density and velocity of the solar wind has all declined in the last 24 hours. We have moderate levels of high energy electrons, but of course without any flares we have no proton events. The auroral zone as imaged by the NOAA 15 satellite looks very quiet and the KP index has been varying between only 0 and 2 with an average of about 0.5. So this is one of the quietest periods we've had for a long time. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B1 level, the sunspot number has risen to 53. The radio sun intensity is at 98 solar flux units. Solar wind speed has dropped to 360 kilometers per second with a density much less than one proton per cubic centimeter and geospace conditions are very quiet. 
So my forecast for the next 24 hours is there's a good chance of getting C flares. M flares are just possible, but the chance of getting X flare is very remote. The sunspot number will remain stable. We have a good chance of coronal mass ejections. The solar wind speed will remain low, and the chance of getting a geomagnetic storm is very poor. From the composite coronal image, we can see that the new region is just about to come over the northeast limb. And in fact, if you looked at the X-ray uh, movie, you would see some evidence of it. But it doesn't look particularly spectacular at the moment. The answer to the trivia question is that there were two dogs, two rats, and 40 mice on board, making a total of 44. And all of them survived the trip. In fact, one of the dogs had puppies the following year, and one of the puppies was given to Jacqueline Kennedy as a goodwill gesture from the Russians. Of course, the CIA didn't want the Kennedys to accept it in case the Russians had planted a microphone inside the dog. One can only speculate how they were going to retrieve the information. Perhaps via a pooper scooper. There again proving that military intelligence is an oxymoron. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.